God I was able to break that fall. <laughs> oh. financing my lifestyle and there is nothing wrong with that and I'm not ashamed of talking about it. What is this? If we want to benefit from a man, let us benefit from a man. Isn't it only fair that if that's something we want to do, that we can take advantage of that? If a woman has for once an advantage in something, why should that advantage be taken away from her? Why? <sighs> Alright. I've been summoned once again. Let's do this. Before we begin, I want to make sure to let you guys know that there are going to be timestamps in the video description, so that way if you do not have the chance to watch the full thing through, or you just want to skip around to parts that interest you most, they're there for you to use at your discretion. I want to show you guys something. I'm going to give you no context, and we're going to read it along together. And it was a post that I saw that I want you guys to help me figure out where you actually found the problem in what this particular person is saying. My husband lost his job, and I'm considering leaving him. My husband is a plastic surgeon. He previously made between $500,000 and $700,000 a year with bonuses at his practice. He was recently let go due to COVID reducing plastic surgery patient load. He is a doctor and he's only been able to find general practice work. His highest offer has been $250,000 and he's considering accepting the offer. I know we need the money, but I don't want him to get used to working a low salary and not working hard to get back up into the mid sixes that we've accustomed. He used to give me $10,000 a month allowance, which has now been slashed to $3,000. I had to stop getting my nails, hair, and salon services. My monthly shopping has been reduced significantly. I know he might recover, but he might not. And I know my worth and what I'm accustomed. I feel just gross having to accept this sort of lifestyle. I know there are other men in Israel practice that clear more than $500,000 a year, and there's no reason I can't get one of those men. We don't have kids yet, and I just don't want to settle with some loser with mediocre ambitions. What should I do? I'm afraid if I leave him too soon, I might find myself in an even more difficult place. Please advise. I know I'm a mod here, but even I need advice also. Now, if that didn't make you question life, the rest of this video will. This right here is the type of mentality that we're gonna be discussing today. And it actually is a problem, but you're not really gonna see it when it comes to like news or if you follow social media accounts, even though I'm certain that you can guess that there are certain people that are partaking in this type of behavior, but Recently, I stumbled upon a particular person's YouTube channel that once going through the content that they have and hearing a lot of the things that they try to teach to their audience, I just felt like I had to make a video on it and to be able to address the problem for exactly what it is. Because this should not be tolerated at all. This is absolutely ridiculous. It is quite the extreme. But even though it is, again, not something that you're just going to be widely seeing throughout any sort of media, it is something that to be able to know what the red flags are, it will hopefully prevent more of this from happening in the future. Now, the person's channel that I stumbled upon was Anna Bay, a popular YouTuber whose channel focuses around elegance, living a luxurious lifestyle, and the do's and don'ts of what it takes to level up their status in life. Also, she teaches young women how to bag a billionaire. Digging more into her channel, I was able to find out that she has a diploma in international etiquette and protocol, she is also a certified consultant and matchmaker. Now in my program, Secrets of the Elite Women, I do teach more in depth about setting strong boundaries. You can visit schoolofaffluence.com to put yourself on the wait list. Wait, I made it? I got accepted! I'm gonna go back to school and I'm gonna bag myself a billionaire. Let's do this. Why do people use this word so much? Gold digger, a woman who forms relationships with men purely to obtain money or gifts from them. Okay, so as I understand it, it's only if you want to have some material gain from them. As I understand, after googling around, it seems that according to dictionaries and so on, the word gold digger stands for when women are only interested in the material or the monetary gain of somebody. Sounds right. The word gold digger comes, of course, originally from men. It comes from men who do not appreciate women, who perhaps hate women. It comes from men who get triggered by the higher standards of a woman that they cannot live up to. It's basically broke guys who cannot afford these type of women. Uh, wait. Uh, 
men that cannot afford women, women are objects to be bought. And it's not that men hate women, it's that they hate some of the actions that some of these women are taking. Generalizing everyone over one thing is stereotyping. That's bad. Calling her gold digger is the man's and also the society's. It's a way of controlling her. It's a way of telling her that you don't come and think that you're somebody. Go back to your place. That's basically what this gold digger word is communicating to us. Whoa, whoa, hold up. Excuse me. It's not about controlling women. It's about calling out bad behavior. It's kind of like on Door the Explorer when they see Swiper and he's trying to swipe. So they tell Swiper not to swipe and it keeps it from happening. It's kind of the same thing. I am a traditional feminism who believes that the man has a role and is not currently fulfilling his role in society. Instead, although I'm a big feminist and I support the feminist journey that has been going on, but I believe that feminism has started to take a direction that is no longer beneficial for the woman. It has been, and thank God for those times, but is going to an extreme now that is no longer beneficial for women. Wait, what do you mean by that? Teacher, I'm looking through all of my notes here, and I just, I, I'm not sure. Could you explain that last part to me and make it make sense? I am getting bashed left, right, and center by people who uh, accuse me of not being a feminist, of uh, going against the principle of what we have been wanting to change in the recent feminist movement. And the thing is that I feel like feminism is getting very much to the extreme. Feminism have reached a point where for me it's no longer feminism anymore. For me, feminism is all about equality. It's about empowering other women. For me, feminism is not about bashing other women and uh, dominate one another and thinking that you are bad and I'm better than you because I am like this and you're not like that. I agree that's about quality. All this time, I have been hoping that feminism is about having a choice. It's about not being forced to have to work or do something or look a particular way. I thought feminism was about choice. The choice of being able to choose. The choice of being able to be whoever we want to be. Wait, what? Teacher, that's not what the definition of feminism is. According to Merriam-Webster's definition of feminism, it's about equality of the sexes. It has nothing to do with choices on whether someone wants to work or not. Women fought for the chance to be equal with men in the workplace, and they continue to fight for that today. But you want it to be a choice on whether a woman wants to be able to work or not? How does that make any sense? I don't think it's fair for the rest of the female population to be judged and categorized as these type of women just because a small percentage does it. But, teacher, you've been generalizing men, but doing so for women is bad? That's not feminism, that's sexism. And that clearly goes against feminism. A woman, she shows her femininity in many ways to the man. Her role is to be the caregiver, which she is. And she expresses that by being nurturing, caring, take care of a household, etc. Wait, so men can't... Ms. Bay, are you saying that men can't do those same exact things? That they can't be caring, nurturing, or take care of the household as well? If you want equality, why should men be paying 100% of the time? We want equal rights, but that doesn't mean that we are equals. So how is that going to work then? This is why we need to stop talking about being equals and instead focus on what's fair. But you literally just said... Damn it. How can you one second say that the focus is on equality for men and women, which actually is feminism? Denounce it immediately followed by focusing on what is fair. Things being fair is subjective depending on the circumstances. Whereas when things are actually equal, there is a level playing field across the board that everyone- If you are a true feminist, then you are holding women by your back and supporting them and not bashing them. Supporting someone simply because they're a woman is sexist. Feminism is about supporting what is equal. No biases in favor for men or women, although centering their efforts for highlighting women's goals and desires and what is equal for them. You're really starting to contradict yourself. You see, women are gatherers from an evolutionary psychology take. Men are hunters, women are gatherers. Yeah, I remember hearing about that when it came to caveman days in order to survive. We are not biologically equal. Men and women are built differently. 
women have far more disadvantages financially in society, but also biologically. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to ask you to cite some of those sources because women have an innate biological disadvantage. Are you talking about when it comes to everything or just simply things that only really affect you and your students? Yes, when it comes to anatomy, we are built differently, but that doesn't mean that one particular gender is better than the other especially when it comes to every single circumstance. That actually goes against feminism because you already stated that you are actually a traditional feminist. The advantage of a 50-50 society doesn't exist because the man is not capable of going 100% 50-50 with a woman for biological reasons. A man cannot carry a child half of the time. A man cannot have to deal with hormones, menstruation, and all kinds of things half of the time that a woman has to deal with. That is the brutal reality. <laughs> Teacher! Okay, sure. Men can't actually carry children and they cannot birth them at all. And even though we're not directly affected when it comes to mood swings and hormones or anything else that women actually have to deal with when it comes to getting pregnant, we do have to actually deal with them through our woman. Now, granted, sometimes they are a little bit more subtle and nice. However, sometimes it's not like that and it's very drastic and aggressive. But because we love them, we look to the future and know that this time will pass. <laughs> we don't have to deal with it, my ass. And also don't forget, the biggest reason why women actually prioritize finances in a man and status is because it's in our instinct. It's a biological thing. It's something that research has proven. It's something that has been with us for millions of years for survival reasons. <laughs> Yes and no. When it comes to money, that was never inept within us to think of currency. And status and thinking yourself as high class in order to be able to survive is the idea that you're actually thinking that you are better than somebody else because you're thinking of yourself as high class while other people are not. Which actually goes against feminism, which again, you stated that you are a traditional feminist. Our brain is wired in a more complex way in terms of things that we intuitively think about. It has to do with children, with nurturing community and relationships and building relationships, forming relationships and so on. Men don't have the same capacity in terms of brain structure to think in those lines that women do. <laughs> I'll give you the idea that women's brains are far more active when it comes to activity, comparatively speaking, to a man, and they are able to multitask a lot better than men do. But as far as what you're actually talking about, it doesn't actually in any way, shape, or form relate to that at all. Men can do the exact same thing. I'm starting to understand why some people say that you're not acting like a feminist. We are responsible for, you know, bringing life to this earth. We are responsible for making that life survive on this earth, you know? And there are plus so many more things that we are responsible of. Do you care to elaborate on that at all? You listed things that you clearly have an advantage of because men can't do that. No matter how the society says that, yes, but actually men are now also helping women 50-50 with the children and with the relationships and with community building and household and so on. Well, we all know that is not true. We all know that even though a man is trying his hardest to pull in as much load as a woman does, he still can switch off his brain and not think about what's happening in the kitchen or with the kids or this and that. He still can just be very simple-minded and very kind of what's happening right here, right now. But a woman doesn't have that. She's built differently. And this is what's so unfair, that she has to carry so many different burdens, so many different hats. She has to have many roles now in society, at home, at work, in the relationships and so on. While the man is very comfortable, he's sorted. He is just doing one thing at a time. What you are saying isn't gender specific. Women can also shut their brain off, just like guys do. I know plenty that do. And yes, men do actually contribute to the household chores and make sure that they are cooking for their wife as well and taking care of the kids. I'm an example of that, along with so many other guys that I know that are very attentive fathers when it comes to their children's lives. The only one that doesn't want to acknowledge that is you. The woman is the one who is taking care of the kids, running the household, running the relationship, building the community with networking and socializing and friendships and society, whatever it is, obligations. 
And the man only has one role, and that is go to work. And then after work, he eats his food that his woman has cooked for him, or he goes and does his things that he's used to doing while the woman is doing everything that she's obliged to do. So for this reason, ladies, yes, the society is very unfair towards women. I do not call this fair feminism at all. That's why I'm a traditional feminist, because I know that back in the days, although there was a lot of things that were not in favor for women, but a lot of things were actually in favor for women. The fact that the man was the provider and the woman didn't have to stress whether she was forced to work. So you're just going to completely discredit all single dads, very active dads in their kids' lives that have to be able to play both the mother and the father role, especially if they have either full custody or they even have 50-50 custody where they take the kids on very long particular parts of the week, whether it be during the week or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, when the kids are off school and are far more active. You're gonna just completely discredit all of those men that are trying to do better for the children to give them a life that is far better than their own life that they had growing up to make sure that their kids have a far better chance of a future than they even had, despite any differences that he may have with the mother. I bet you're one of those people that wants to both cancel Father's Day as well as celebrate single moms on that day as well. So what's happening in society and is that women are offloading 50% of the financial load in the household or in the relationship or in general in society. Although women have much more expenses than men, much more responsibility than men and many more hats to carry than men. Those extra expenses are on women. And the thing is, when it comes to a man, if he tells her what to wear and what kind of makeup to put on and how to look and present herself, yeah, I would say that that is actually on the guy to be able to pay for those things. But a woman's own idea of what the beauty standard is and wanting to be able to live up to that standard, that should actually be on her. Thus being of actual true equality, she should be able to pay for that herself. And what's fair is actually if the man takes some form of responsibility, provides for his woman, and like this, we would be able to at least balance out some of the unfairnesses that happen between the sexes because of biological reasons and because how our society is built. Okay, you again mentioned balances being needed, but because of biology and society, Getting pregnant and the childbearing is biological disadvantage for men as we cannot actually do that. Just going off of your own logic, where's the equality in that? We as men cannot control that at all. But when it comes to making money, being able to vote, holding valuable positions at jobs, that's something that is not gender specific and is actually becoming more equal by the day. And yet you tend to focus on less than a handful of things that neither gender literally can or can't do. You're now generalizing to be able to get an advantage in a conversation that otherwise could and would be equal. However, I am aware that there is a small percentage of women who are just too lazy to work and believe that staying with a man, even if they don't like him, is better than going and work full time in, in some job that they hate. I wouldn't want to work either if I was given the choice. What do you bring to the table? Are you seriously asking me this? What is wrong with that question? You have this idea that men need to be able to meet certain requirements to provide for you, but we can't ask the same thing in return? It's a fair question. Or is it not fair because you're a woman and as a man, we shouldn't be asking any questions. That we simply just go to work and that's it. 50 plus years ago, that was the norm. That was the norm because we have gender roles. Animals also have gender roles, kind of similar to our gender roles, you know? So we are just living up to our gender roles when we expect a man to provide for us. This is how he is able to show his masculinity. How else is he gonna do that? Through pumping his muscles, like, and grow them bigger? I mean, things change. It's the only constant when it comes to life. And you have to be able to adapt in order to survive. That's society for you. And I don't know who's the worst men or women in this society. I am amazed how far behind we still are in time, even though they claim that what I'm doing is going back in time. I mean, you kind of are. You're pretty much wanting to send us back to the Stone Age. Just don't be manipulated by society is my only advice that I want to give you. Whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. You literally just discredited everything you just said. 
everything. Your entire premise of going back to when it was hunters and gatherers, where men were the hunters and doing all the work, and women were simply just being comfortable, where women didn't have to go to work or that it was a choice, that is a society that you want the entire planet to go back to. But now you're saying to not have society manipulate you at all. Jesus Christ. Women are continuously shamed by our society for having this instinct of wanting to own things. Nobody's shaming you for wanting to own things. All they dislike is the way that you try to actually obtain these things through using someone else's money to make that happen. They call us materialistic and they shame us for it, and in my opinion, this is sexist. But it's not though. Being materialistic is not a gender specific trait. It is a case by case situation and guys can be materialistic as well. Think about how possessive they are over their cars. Now if you ask me, I'm actually proud of what I am doing. Yes, I have a man financing my lifestyle and there is nothing wrong with that and I'm not ashamed of talking about it. <laughs> I think she's finally snapped from all this hypocrisy. So let us women have at least one advantage. If we want to benefit from a man, let us benefit from a man. Isn't it only fair that if that's something we want to do, that we can take advantage of that? I just feel like this is the right thing to do. Why should at least this advantage, the little few advantages that we have, be taken away from us? It's because you're being unfair, unequal to a man. You're using him for your own personal and financial gain. That is actually what a gold digger does. Now, okay, it's fine. You don't have to agree with everything I say, but you don't have to judge. I don't shame them, so I don't understand why they have to shame me. The only part of it that you can actually control are your own actions, not someone else's reaction that you are in no control over whatsoever. You just need to be able to learn to take that for exactly whatever it may be. It's like if a man sleeps around, he gets a pat on his back, but if a woman sleeps around, oh, she is a slut, she is this, she is that. Anything to shame a woman. <sighs> this really isn't right to think of, but I can easily explain this one. And it's the idea of a key and a lock. If you have a key that can open multiple different locks, it's thought of as a master key. But if a lock can be opened by multiple different keys, that's a busted lock. Again, I'm not saying it's right, but there you go. Sadly, these misogynistic men get back up from our fellow women. Oh yes, us women, we are doing an amazing job at backstabbing each other, which is something I really, really hope and pray for, that one day maybe we can act more like sisters instead of predators. I believe we should hold each other's backs instead of taking the side of men. They aren't siding with them because they're men. They're siding with them because of the fact that what you're teaching and the message that you're sending to very impressionable women is ridiculous standards for how society is now. Right and wrong are not specific to a gender. What you are concerned with is you are trying to make points and they aren't being supported by women. Yes, I am a woman who wants to have an affluent lifestyle. I am a woman who prioritizes love as much as I prioritize the financial aspect or the financial quality a man can offer me. I prioritize them both equally much. Because yes, in this world you can have both. It's not easy, but you can. I value the romantic side in a relationship as much as I value the materialistic and financial aspect. Both are equally important to me, and yes, you can have both in today's society. I don't like cheap men. This woman is absolutely hypocritical. I am a woman who loves the finer things in life. I love having a man spoil me. I love having not to work and have a man take care of me financially. I love being a woman and I love reaping the benefits of a woman. Because finally, for once, a woman has a benefit. And that's what drives people crazy. And that's what drives people to jealousy and this hatred. And that's why they are shaming me left, right and center. Writing evil comments. They call me prostitute. They make fun of the way I look. Anything to try and dominate, to try and put me and bring me down. <laughs> They're not jealous of you. Believe me. Wait. You're not gonna believe me simply because I'm a guy. Sorry, must have forgot my place because apparently to you, 
The only place that I have is at work, and that's it. I don't think that we should use and abuse anyone. As soon as a woman is asking for this one thing, then we are these entitled gold diggers. That was quite the fallacy. That had to be. Because, I mean, I wouldn't think that she would be that self-unaware. So you want me to pay you a salary for being with me? This is not a job. This is not a salary. This is a very skewed way of looking at it. It's like as if you are literally passively aggressively calling a woman to be a prostitute. I want to be with a woman who doesn't depend on me. Well, that I believe is a responsibility to both the man and the woman to make sure that that doesn't happen in the relationship. From the man's side, he has to truly offer her an allowance so that she contains her independence, she doesn't have to ask him for money every time she wants something, and so that she actually can have some form of savings in case she would need it for a rainy day. Now with regards to the woman, she has to take her responsibility. She needs to have an education, she needs to have work experience, and of course she needs to have savings. Like this, she will always be independent no matter what happens. Plus, this way, a man will never be able to use that against a woman in order to kind of lock her down in a relationship. But you literally just said that he needs to be able to give you an allowance as it is his job or role in your relationship. To maintain independence as a woman, the amount of times that you have contradicted yourself is astounding to me. You lack the idea of maintaining independence if you have to rely on somebody else. Think about it. Where you say that you provide and you want money in return, that is the definition of a job. You can't talk your way out of that. And let's not forget this point that you tried to sneak past me earlier in lesson four, but I was able to catch it. The fact that you're trying to say that your money is your money and his money is your money, please explain to me how that is maintaining any form of independence whatsoever. It's like you're only with me because of the money. Well, do you know, as women, we have to constantly wonder and worry about, is he with me because of the sex, or because of the looks, or because I cook so well, or clean so well, or does his dirty laundry? I don't know. The fact that you have to question that goes back to when you were asked what you brought to the table. What do you bring to the table? Are you seriously asking me this? Which is again a fair question to ask. If you would actually establish the idea for what each of you actually bring to the relationship. That I believe is a responsibility to both the man and the woman. You wouldn't have to ask such questions or think of what is he actually with me for? You would know going into the relationship. You're acting entitled. You know that men act entitled on a daily basis and it's fully normal. How come in our society it's so accepted for men to treat women as sex objects. Yet, it's so incredibly taboo and forbidden for a woman to somehow have a financial interest in a man. I mean, one, you're not denying that you don't use a man for his money. And two, two wrongs don't make a right. Your entire brand is off the idea of being elegant and teaching elegance to other women to be able to level them up. And elegance is defined as refined grace and dignified propriety. And propriety means the idea of one's behavior to be thought of as correct. So taking all of this into consideration, because someone does something really bad to maybe you or your entire gender, whatever the case is, that then gives you the right to be able to act just as bad to them back? Is that what your equality is all about? Where it's only equality when it actually fits your narrative and it gives you the advantage, but all of a sudden it no longer fits your narrative and it's unfair to you and your gender, you decide to call it sexist and pull the feminism card to be able to help yourself out of a hole that you dug yourself into. Is that what you mean by being a true feminist? Is that what it actually is about? Because I know quite a few people that would think otherwise. You know what? I'm done. This is a bunch of bull Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. This oh, it was just such an amazing honor to be your valedictorian. It has been such an eye-opening experience to be able to take this course and to be able to learn that life is so much more worth living on somebody else's salary. Am I right? Yes, thank you, thank you. And with my newfound knowledge, I too will be able to go out and bag myself a billionaire. Oh, such a wonderful feeling.
it seems like maybe only 15 minutes ago that I was able to enroll in the school. And in that short amount of time, I was able to learn what it feels like to be entitled to what isn't mine. And I really can't thank the school enough for giving me this opportunity. Where our motto is, when it comes to relationships, our elegance is our walk and a man's wallet is our talk. That's right, never forget that. And to quote some average Joe who's not even worth the dirt on the bottom of my shoes, life is a garden, dig it. And because of what I've learned in this school, I will not be digging for gold in the depths of a cave, but in the creases of a man's wallet. And if I graduate today with learning only one thing, it is that men really are only good for one particular thing. And that is providing me a lifestyle that I could, and especially would, never be able to afford on my own. And why should I? That's what they're here for. But remember, relationships are work. <laughs> For him, not us. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> and yes, of course, we can have both love and money, but especially love for his money, because that's all he's good for, bringing to the table that he bought. Thank you, thank you all so much. It has been a great honor being here with you, and I cannot wait to be able to bag myself a billionaire. Thank you, thank you. Now that we have all graduated and have learned how to be able to bag ourselves a billionaire, I wanna go ahead and address a couple of points that she made during class and kind of compare them to what she has said when it comes to articles, as well as when she was interviewed for i.tv, where in this video, she was trying to clarify her points since she was getting so much backlash for them, especially from a separate video where she outright just states men should just pay for everything, not just a woman's time or a date, but just literally every expense a woman should ever have, seen or unseen. This article comes from The Sun, where Anna explains why she couldn't love a man who was poor. Ruth, the host, asks her if she ever could love someone who was poor, where Anna says it's possible for someone else to do so, however she cannot. Anna then states that when you live a rich lifestyle, it's hard not to want to maintain such a life. For me, when it comes to wanting to maintain that kind of lifestyle, if you're the one that's actually doing that for yourself, I completely understand that because it is your money and it is your right to be able to do with it as you choose. However, it is because of the men that she dates that she's able to live this lifestyle. And if a guy doesn't have money, she isn't looking his way whatsoever, which kind of contradicts her statements that she said earlier because she was very much adamant about saying that you can have love and money in a relationship when it comes to working hard to make that happen but she also is understanding that there are people that are simply with somebody just because they're money and they also don't want to go and work a job that they don't like however i am aware that there is a small percentage of women who are just too lazy to work and believe that staying with a man even if they don't like him is better than going and work full time in, in some job that they hate and this statement in the article kind of gives the idea that she is first looking at a man simply for his wallet and then later on when she knows oh he would be able to provide me that lifestyle she then looks at the character of the man to be able to determine if yes i actually can be with him versus if he was poor, but a good man, she would not be able to date him whatsoever. Giving off the idea that a man's character is worth less than the money that he would be able to bring in. And it's kind of like the idea for the rapper Sweetie, who was trying to advise women that if a man is not able to provide you a Birkin bag to be able to show that he is interested in you and that he would be able to take care of you in the future, that he was not even worth your time and you should just move on to the next guy. When it comes to a Birkin bag, the price tag on those are from $9,000 to $500,000. And again, she simply said this as to show interest that you actually would be able to take care of her. Not the idea of this would be an anniversary present, a birthday present, Christmas present, or anything like that. Obviously, again, she's in a very different tax bracket than me. But the idea that a man has to be able to shell out between $9,000 and $500,000 just to show interest is absolutely ridiculous. It's kind of similar to how Anna is portraying her relationships where her affection can actually be bought and that a man is supposed to be able to financially provide everything for her while also being able to give her an allowance so that way she can maintain independence within the relationship. 
Ruth then goes on to remind Anna that she is sending the wrong message to young women, that it should be about equality, not in throwing all the hard work women have done before her to show that they deserve to be seen as an equal to a man for the idea of bagging a billionaire to have him pay for her lifestyle. Anna then says that her message is about being independent, but in a clever way, that women should have the choice on whether to work or not, that her students should think of themselves as being of high society. When it comes to thinking of yourself or just identifying as a high society type of person, that's pretty much like me saying that I identify as the president of the United States and you are to treat me and respect me as such without putting in any of the work to actually make that happen. Keyword work, which is funny to me because her point on being traditional and believing in the gender roles of hunters and gatherers, which means pandering to societal pressure and stigma for living life. Yet she says there needs to be adaptation to be a part of that lifestyle. It's a fundamental difference in the way we're gonna see things. We're not gonna see out how in this issue. Our tests in life are different. A woman's test in life is material. A man's test in life is a woman. Now by test, I mean that those are the things that we desire. Men have nice cars. Not because they like nice cars, because they know women like nice cars. Because men are hunters, and the car is the bait. And the woman comes and says, ooh, nice Porsche. Gotcha. Come on now, you go to a woman's house, her house be comfortable as shit. Women love comfortable surroundings, so men get comfortable surroundings. Let me tell you something. If a man could f a woman in a cardboard box, he wouldn't buy a house. And she's pretty much, for lack of better wording, pulling the victim card in that she wants to be seen as equal to a man and be treated as an equal. But when it comes to putting in the work that is needed once she is in a relationship with a man, that the work to bring in the money and responsibility to spend it should be that a man gives her money while claiming independence. That she only adapts to fit the status quo of how a woman should look in high society living. She then actually backs up my point right after saying women should change themselves and not just looks, but everything about them as who they were before possibly wouldn't be good enough. That they have to live up to society standards for what a woman should look like. Even in another article by The Sun, she claims how other women really should get themselves surgically altered as it worked good for her. Alright, now back to the original article. Anna then goes on to say one of the most honest points she's made this whole video, saying that we live in a very superficial world. Now there are two different ways that I took this. First being that she's talking about society. That the idea for how things are now are superficial. That it's only because she's living in a means above others as she has rich men pay for her lifestyle. And if she were to come down to earth with the rest of us, she could then see that society's means for a livable lifestyle and the wages most of us get that are considered livable are far different than the millions of a man she's given an allowance per month to spend. Or two, that the lifestyle she is in is superficial, which then goes against what she has been teaching us and how she wants to be traditional. That everything you see of her is shallow, from the physical to the mental aspects of herself, which she has admitted in changing completely to feel better about herself. And she has stated time and time again that she isn't ashamed to say she lives like this. Now if you ask me, I'm actually proud of what I'm doing. Yes, I have a man financing my lifestyle and there is nothing wrong with that and I'm not ashamed of talking about it. I am a woman who loves the finer things in life. I love having a man spoil me. I love having not to work and have a man take care of me financially. I love being a woman and I love reaping the benefits of a woman. The article ends with Ruth saying that she would see what she's doing as being a gold digger. Anna then says that gold digging gives off a bad reputation and she doesn't agree with the claims. And she criticizes other women and that they may not understand prioritizing having love amongst money. Where in any of the article did she actually talk about love? Let alone even just the clips that I have already shown in this video. Except for the love of a man's money to be able to fund her lifestyle. You know a group of women I'd love them to do a show on? Are those 24, 25 year old gorgeous women who will go out and like hook up and marry like an 80 year old rich guy? You ever seen them hanging out with like Hugh Hefner? Some 70 year old guy in his pajamas? Now, if they were just honest about it, we're like, look, this guy's gonna die in like seven or eight minutes. And we get a bag of cash and a Lexus. I wouldn't have a problem with it. But they always try and lie and be like, no, I love him for who he is. It has nothing to do with the big yacht. There's just something about the way he drools in his bathrobe as he pushes the checkers along. It's really enjoyable. This one be like, lady, you're humping him for his money. How do you have sex with somebody 40, 50 years old? I'll tell you the only way you can do it, you know what you gotta do? You gotta put the will on the headboard. <laughs> no, so at any point, if you lose your nerve, you just can read some of the stuff that you're getting. You're just sitting there like, oh my God, this is disgusting. What is becoming me? Oh, a house in Miami. Okay, I can stick this out a little bit longer. I guess this isn't as bad as I was thinking a second ago. In another article where she states why she wouldn't pay for a man's time, and neither should any woman at all, 
The ideas that were brought up in the actual article itself didn't really address anything new. However, there were certain pictures and captions that really caught my attention. From the Daily Mail, where she continues the idea that women have more duties than men, her photo is captioned with how she is a traditional feminist and wants to go back to historical generals, again posing the idea where she says we live in a superficial world, and goes against the idea where she says not to have society tell you how to live your life. The other photo that stuck out to me was how she claims that because women have to maintain their looks and wardrobe, they spend more on themselves for their partners, so men should spend more on their women. You're wanting to go back to when chivalry was more precedent, and I completely respect that, as I actually personally still believe in chivalry. However, the idea for how a woman should look and the societal standard, it's not something that you really see amongst men telling women how to actually be. When it comes to the wardrobe, when it comes to makeup, when it comes to just how she conducts herself in public amongst everybody else, that's not something that you really generally see guys putting the pressure on women. Chivalry is there, and women killed it. Chivalry got killed by the feminist movement on the magazines that got women going crazy because women got too much advice about men from other women. And they don't know what they're talking about. And it's true. I see it in the, ma in the magazines. I don't read them, but I be seeing the cover. I look at, I be in the grocery store, fellas, you look at one of the magazines, like, what is this? And they say on the cover, a hundred ways to please your man by some lady. And then, the magazines trick the women. The magazines start picking at your self-esteem. Every page you turn, you start feeling fatter and uglier, and you feel like your clothes aren't good enough. And the magazines have you forgetting how beautiful you are. And that's what happens. Now look what happens. And then you forget how beautiful you are, and we all suffer. She has repeatedly stated that she wants to be able to bag a rich man preferably a billionaire. But there's also criteria that she has for what kind of rich man to not look for. Yet another article, she has specific men to stay away from. A few of them I actually agree with her, but two of them really stood out to me. The first being men that have old money. In summary, it's when men have money that was inherited to them that they didn't work for, but rather were just given to them. You want the ideal situation to be for yourself and women overall to be given money by men, but you hate the idea of guys inheriting money? This is sexist. The second being of workaholics. I have lost count in researching this video how many times she has said in her videos on her channel that men are only good for one thing, and that is to work, and that they need to be providers to fund a woman's high society life. Even saying that men who call women gold diggers hated women because they couldn't buy them. The word gold digger comes, of course, originally from men. It comes from men who do not appreciate women, who perhaps hate women. It comes from men who get triggered by the higher standards of a woman that they cannot live up to. It's basically broke guys who cannot afford these type of women. When it comes to the animal kingdom, those that are able to see an opportunity to take from another that isn't theirs, to be able to latch on and take the life essence from their host, those are called leeches. And the same can be said for these types of people that they see someone has something that they want and they feel entitled to it because, um, look at me. I got you a beautiful woman. I don't trust beautiful women. I just don't. You know why? Because you know what I've noticed in my life as a man? Beautiful women are only around when you have stuff. When your life is going on, great. They're all over the place. But when you're broke, you can't find a beautiful woman. You're like under a bridge. There's like trolls and ferrets running around. They're just not around. Then the second you get some, like, you get a little money off, they come out of the woodwork. Like, oh my god, you have some stuff. Can you buy me some stuff? I want some stuff too. Then the second you go broke, oh my god, I left something over here next to this guy. He has stuff I've always loved him. There is nothing wrong with wanting to live a better life and to strive to be able to do better tomorrow than you did today, just like you would do better today than you would yesterday. But the main problem is when you don't think of things logically, reasonably, and realistically, and you try to preach this type of rhetoric as if it was the Bible to other people on how to be able to live their life on somebody else's money. Another point that she really isn't understanding or even wanting to acknowledge at all is that when it comes to society for both men and women, there are a lot of changes that have been happening negatively and is making it to where the idea for wanting her to think of a guy as being the sole breadwinner is not really the rhetoric for people to live by today. Because the one thing that has changed is the dollar is not as valuable as it once was. The dollar is still worth a dollar, but what you can actually get for that dollar has drastically changed. Think about it. You guys see it every single day. Gas prices when it comes to the dollar is right now being seen as more of the threes and fours to start off the price. When I as a kid remember, it used to be starting with a one. 
And you also have shopping carts that you can't fill up for 20 to $30. Now it's gonna take 100 plus dollars to be able to fill it up on a general basis. Another key example are housing prices. Houses used to be between 100 to 200,000 on average. Now they are seeing more in the three to 400 thousands. And that's not even just because of the fluctuation of the housing market. That's just the general average when it comes to buying a house. Things have changed in a very negative manner. And that's one thing that she, again, is not really wanting to address, but more so just trying to put the problem on the fact that guys themselves are not able to adapt to this environment and women should not have to. When if you're trying to be about equality, everyone needs to be able to adapt to be able to survive. With that in mind, it's not even enough for one person to be able to have a full-time job to be able to pay the bills, whether it be for the house, for necessities such as utilities, and being able to buy groceries, to put gas in the car, or whatever the case is just for basic necessities when it comes to life. Nowadays, it's more seen as both people in the relationship need to be able to have some form of income just to be able to meet the bare necessities in order to survive. But that doesn't also devalue the person that went from maybe being the stay-at-home parent or a stay-at-home spouse, whatever the case is that they were previously doing and only one person was bringing the money, that doesn't devalue the second person for now having to work. But again, with today's society, both of them seem to now have to work full-time jobs just to be able to make ends meet. And that does include those that have to be able to work a job that they don't like, or that they are waiting for a promotion, or they are waiting to get into a position that they actually want, and are waiting on the opportunity to be able to do so, but still trying to maintain some form of income to be able to help with the household necessities or just their relationship necessities. Not everybody is handed a glorious lifestyle that they just simply get to be comfortable and not really put in any work for it other than looking good or wanting to be a trophy wife and feeling entitled to somebody else's money. People have to be able to learn to adapt to how society is now and they can't just go about thinking that they can live life how it was in the past and be able to have it be adaptable for today's standards. Just because something was maybe more normal and seen as accepted in the past doesn't mean that it's going to fit for how today's society is and for how people should be living their lives. And this is a huge example of that. It's similar to how on Family Guy where soldiers are camouflaged in a forest to not be noticed to fit into their surroundings with the situation they are in. While Peter is in a clown outfit, as he thinks since they are soldiers, it's better not to be like them, but that they are blending in to not draw negative attention to themselves. And Peter is left looking like a clown for his choices. I just wanted to be able to clarify that because she really brings up society stigma for men and women's roles a lot. One of the problems that I personally see, and again, this is just simply my opinion, she's more just trying to help her way of thinking and to be able to fit her own narrative, and that's really it. When it comes to feminism, like I've already showed in this video, it's about equality. But for her, she's trying to make it to where things how they were back then are trying to be seen as more normal now and should be the society standard. But the problem with that is she's trying to think of it as more of how men were the breadwinners and women were just very comfortable and did not have to do anything, but is more so a choice. I understand that you want to have choices, but that's not how society works for today. She's just trying to be nitpicky on the things that she wants to be able to advocate for and that she truly believes in, and the rest of it she seems to be disregarding. It's kind of like how when a bill used to pass through the House and the Senate, the president would be able to do what's called a line item veto. He would get the bill, take out the things that he doesn't like, and be able to pass it on to make it into law. That is pretty much kind of like what she's doing here, where she is trying to advocate for feminism only when it really fits her narrative, but the fact that she's trying to just, again, take only certain parts of it and say that, yes, this is what true feminism is supposed to be, and then anything that doesn't really fit her narrative is considered sexism. That's a problem for actual feminists that are trying to advocate for equality for men and women because she's trying to have her narrative be seen more as a normal type of thinking when it comes to women and feminists in general because she, again, has clearly stated that she is a feminist. And if people are seeing this as what normal feminism is about, it's unfortunately, again, in my opinion, gonna be doing a lot of backtracking for what feminism is actually trying to advocate for and is gonna be getting a lot more backlash and met with a lot more resistance. Not all women are able to live the lifestyle that she has. And the problem is she's not really trying to speak to those people other than say, hey, get up on my level. She's not really advocating for how those women are actually being affected realistically in society. She's just saying, hey, you should be living like this but you're not. You should be thinking more along the ways that I do, but you're not. That's where I feel the disconnect is with our content. We can't just force that to happen because again, we can't force gas to go down to $1. We can't force houses to drop down in prices. We can't force the fact that grocery carts can't be filled for very little to nothing compared to what they are now. Things change, inflation happens, and the way that we live life is gonna change along with it. And that also means that traditions within life are gonna change as well. So you would share your bed and your fortune with a beautiful fool. That is the way it has always been with men in power. It is tradition. 
It is also tradition that times must and always do change. This whole video isn't to say that men wouldn't or couldn't act in such a way. However, it is perceived to be more women doing this than men, especially when it comes to joking about very young Instagram or social media models, going on lavish, amazing cruises, or constantly on yachts or on private jets acting single and ready for a good time. And all the while, some 50 plus year old guys are the ones funding this life, but will never be willingly claimed by the women because they are trying to bring in simps money. And they're trying to perceive the idea that they are the ideal people to want in life when they're living off someone else's money until the newer model comes around to lease. Also, the stigma for when it comes to streaming, how a lot of the female streamers are trying to be able to draw in simps to be able to get a lot of donations, to get subs, and they will use their bodies to be able to make easy money. You use your body to get viewers, aren't you? I think you know that. Yeah, I do, and you know what? And I'll do it again. It's pretty much what is happening with Twitch right now when it came to the hot tub meta and now there's a new ASMR meta where they are being very suggestive not only with sound but just the way that they are actually presenting the ASMR. If you want to know more about that and just how Twitch is pretty much going to be the cause for its own downfall, go ahead and check out the video in the card up above and you will be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. The point is, this kind of mentality is bad. Entitlement to someone else's belongings without any justifiable reasoning is incredibly toxic thinking and it will never work out well for either party in the long run. As if another man richer comes around, or another woman younger and better shows up and is willing to do more for the money, that can mark the end of their relationship. And in that case, leaving them generalizing the other, never truly looking at themselves and their own choices as the problem for the lifestyle. Some will even marry into a family because the name has a high value, and even have a kid with them because worst case scenario, they get child support and try to be taken care of that way. Whatever form it comes in, it is a lifestyle that you should avoid. See the red flags and act upon them immediately. Remember, looks fade, money comes and goes, but don't let the money go for a look that could just as easily go, not only from leaving you physically, but using the money to then fit into a narrative of how high society women are apparently supposed to be portrayed. Thank you all for making this far into the video. I really do appreciate it, and I hope that you were able to learn something from this, if not to be able to get one hell of a laugh from the fact that this actually does truly still exist to this day. I hope you are all staying safe, and I will catch you in the next video. Take care.